All right, so we've been recording a few episodes already today. I think either one's as fucked up as we need to be. So we're about to do a shot right now. We've got Kayla and Ashley in the room with us. So cheers, everybody. We're doing a whole kamikaze. Hey. Yeah, cheers, 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 cheers. I was a bartender. He was a bartender. Yeah. And a chef. And a chef. No, yeah. All the above. Producer. We are at the tail... What in the hell is all that noise? <laughs> it's all the shot glasses getting thrown in the trash. Yeah, I'm, I'm also wondering how many fucking like shots, alcohol consumption, bottles, cans that we've been on this show so far. Uh, I know at least six jars of moonshine. That's that's starting out. <laughs> starting out. Six jars of moonshine. Uh, countless twisted teas, which twisted tea... You, oh, you guys don't want to sponsor us? Yeah, you don't even re- want to respond to messages? <laughs> yeah. Huh? You better than us? You better than us? Uh, yeah, you guys want to play games. We can play games. Yeah, you're only 5%. I can find better. <laughs> <laughs> and we are in Maryland. So, uh, back to our bro company puts a hoop tea. That's an option for us. I think we are followed by some kind of twisted tea. Uh, Page. It's that fan page where you see these like drunk college <laughs> kids. Like uh, I saw the the one where the girl did put it between her boobs and just like put it down that way. I saw, I saw, can't remember where it was. I think it was all there, but I saw a great video where some girl just up and gives some guy oral sex right from a party from everybody. That's not on Twisted Tea. It anyway, <laughs> what we need to do is we need to we need to send Twisted Tea a picture of us drinking Twisted Tea and then have them put it on their label because they do do that. <laughs> And then when they finally hear that, we're like, you know what? Fuck you. It'll all be worth it. Plot twist. Twist to give us an endorsement before this episode comes out. But in other words, your days are numbered. If not otherwise. We are at the tail of the shiny red bicycle. Ben, you remember this episode? As soon as I started watching it, I did, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those famous episodes of Why You're the Dark out there. Yes. And this one, I will not be shitting on. Yeah, I'll agree. There, there's a few small details, but it's not going to be anywhere near as terrible as anything else we've right, seen right, this right. season. I mean, yeah. th- this is the strongest episode. It's definitely the top five of all of Are You Afraid of Dark episodes. Yeah, the story is solid. It's original. We give it two thumbs up, plus two thumbs up, because uh, Kayla and Ashley over there as well. So it would be, it would be eight thumbs up. Because there's four of us and we uh, all approve of this. Four yeah, the, the eight, yeah. or four if we're all only doing one hand. I, who who cares? This is a good episode. Yeah, we have to be technical here, especially how the episode starts out with the roasting of the marshmallows. Have we seen them eat at the Minas Society yet? I, I think we had one episode with the uh, somebody's making a s'more or something like that, right? Well, Kiki's eating a, a burnt marshmallow in this one. Yeah, I, I used to like getting those things on fire and then blowing it out because it's all crispy on the outside. No, fuck that. I, once they're too burnt, you're just pulling, <laughs> pulling the core out of a burnt-ass marshmallow. Well, you got the fire pit at your house, though. So have you done the hot dog thing yet? Mm, no, I right. usually... I'm going to catch some shit from this, but I usually boil mine. Ew! And what the uh, fuck, man? Is this 1989? What are we here. boiling hot dogs for? <laughs> 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 I just want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. So yeah, we had a Christmas badge come out a little while ago, a Christmas gift. So uh, that, that's Christmas. I got some gifts for Ben. I think some cookbooks are in the works here, right? I'm cooking with beer. Yeah. Right. Wait. That's that Bob Ross head talking <laughs> thing that Ben got me. Is put, it plays the messages for you until you press the button. So it's my daily inspiration. Oh. Of course, with all Minas Society's meetings, they have to be waiting on someone. And Kristen comes over with David. Yeah, well, I mean, they're probably, uh, he's probably getting a handy <laughs> behind the trees. Yeah, well, we actually were talking about that, about the sexual chemistry happening there. Because we, we said, like, she touches his arm, like, pretty sensitively in the the hatching episode. He's around the bases. Yeah, well, like, we, we talked about, like, at that age, like, you didn't do that unless you were dating or, like, really, really close to someone. Right. It's just one of those things. But, yeah, he was... And we're not going to see David after this season. Huh? Well, I found out why. But we'll keep going. I like how he says his bike just got jacked. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, 
let me tell you, it takes a special kind of person who steals on his fucking bike. Um, I did, I did research on this shit. Uh, 1993 had the highest crime rate um, in Canada. And it was like a 20 year study. I think it went from like 83 to 2013. I guess that would be 30 years. But anyway, 93 was like the peak and then it started going down again. So <laughs> David's bicycle may very well have been stolen. Yeah. And this episode is in, the, in that time frame. And I was just. My my major gripe right here was though his acting. I, I thought this was some of the worst acting I've seen from from David in this series. Maybe, maybe that's what cost him his job in a nice society. <laughs> it's just so melancholy. And he says, "Once you have a bike, it's yours, no matter who has it." And they came up with a story. Ah, that that's kind of bullshit, man. If you, somebody stole your bike. I mean, it's technically yours, but I mean, that's no, it's their bike. Started. Yeah, yeah. He says it's about a kid who loved his bike so much that he took it with him, even to the grave. Yes. So, Ben, I have a problem with this episode right now already. You know, now that you said that, me too. Is it the same thing I'm thinking? Go ahead. Why is this titled The Shiner Red Bicycle? Okay, yeah. It ha- <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very low... I mean, he sees the bicycle during the episode multiple yeah, times. Yeah, but he, it's, not, that's the it's not about the bicycle. It's about this this kid's death and preventing another yeah. like that's what it's about it's not about the bicycle sure it's a little bit of a part but it's not like the huge part but still a solid ass show like uh episode so actually where's that beer that you had before me right by your lamp which one i have to know right, right by you okay there it is yeah. thanks there we are Get it out of your arms way this episode is not overly scary, like terrifying, kind of like the clown episodes are. It's more of creepy, kind of like we saw in Lonely Ghost and a few episodes like that. Where there's a, Beer me, baby. Yeah, there's a, oh, there, yeah. There's a ghostly figure. <laughs> and But, I mean, the Shire Red Bicycle was the most fucked up, uh, like, non-scary title for an episode. About, like, the tail of the lollipops or something like that. Got that. Yeah, I mean... I I guess, but the uh, I don't know the the bicycle. It, yeah, you're right. I mean, it didn't have that. It didn't really have that big of a role at all. In the beginning, they used it to get to the dam, and it fell off with him. When but, we're when we're into our story here, yeah, the, the, we see two kids on bikes who are obviously best friends racing to some river bridge kind of dam thing. And uh, have you seen where these dams been? We, we're not, and we have them here when we grew up in Maryland. <laughs> Dude, we're yeah. sea level, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our, our, yeah, our house is three feet above sea level. So we, uh, I don't know where Canada, maybe middle. I'm not too familiar with geography there, but yeah, the thing is, we can only make some assumptions because me and Ben haven't seen a dam like this, and you didn't. We didn't go to the Hoover Dam when driving to California. Mm-hmm. I know John Young did. They said it was like a while away. Or maybe it was the Grand Canyon, right? Anywho, they're talking. One of the kids. Ricky is leaning on a post. Then it comes out, his bike falls, and the other kid, whose name is Mike, tries to grab him, but he ends up falling into the dam to his death. I did notice, Ben, when that plank came off, it wasn't even, like, nailed to the fucking post. Right. And yeah. we obviously have a maintenance guy there who is letting the... The water out. Yeah, the reservoir go through. Right. And I was thinking, like, wouldn't that be something they checked on, like, frequently? Because, I mean, that was just, like, a, a little wooden fence there. Yeah, you wouldn't make it a rickety-ass, uh, like, look like kids made it, like, to protect somebody from falling off the dam. And you know that would have been a lawsuit in the half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. That would have been a class, major lawsuit happening there for safety. And this was apparently years ago because... Five. Oh, they, they do say five? They, I th- I'm pretty sure they say five Yeah, years. I was putting his age there, because, I mean, these kids are, like, I don't know, 10, 10 to 12-ish, and, yeah, this is the older team we have when he wakes up from this nightmare. 
He's having a pretty traumatic dream here because he's sweating profusely and his kid brother comes in and mentions the, the bad dreams again. Ben. Yep. They call him Ben. Good ass name. There you go. At breakfast, the tablet comes up and we meet the two parents. Did you notice the mom? <laughs> no, but we do see no. a family. We see a mom and a dad yeah, finally. In, this yeah. e- in this episode. What the hell is going on back there with that laughter? Just a random video. A woman wanted her husband to throw out a Christmas tree. The dogs are fighting him. They don't want him to throw it over the fence. Oh, I thought it was like a death pack or something. Ours is still up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just decorate for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, uh, April Fool's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Flag Day. Yeah. Fourth uh, of July. Yeah, Fourth of July. All that Labor shit. Day. Martin that- Luther King Day. Yep. <laughs> no. Hey, that's smart. Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's time to score Yeah, it is. That was Aunt Daddy. From Lonely Ghost is playing the mom. Ah. Uh, and the funny thing is, her and the dad are actually married in real life or were at the time. I, I checked it recently, but yeah, they said that in the, the trivia section. Very well. The dad jumps up and brings up the accident of what happened with Fricky. <laughs> well, it says, like, what? I mean, wasn't this years ago? Uh, this is my only great with this episode, Ben. Oh, well, I have two. Okay. Here's my main one. It's been five years, and he's still having these vivid nightmares, and they're just up and bringing it like it happens every night. I mean, wouldn't he get checked out for that? Uh, I like how the dad's like, not again. Like you got some kind of fucking control over what you're dreaming about. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll tell you. I mean, you know, I was in the military. I, I have fucked up dreams all the time. She hears me talking to my sleep, you know, and I'm like... Yeah, I'm like, please, God, just don't talk to me, you know, while I'm doing that shit, you know. But, uh, yeah, like you can't control what you fucking dream about. Like, it, that line shouldn't have been in there. Yeah, uh, we're, we're then transported to a classroom scene where Mike is not paying attention and is daydreaming. It gets called out on it. And this is the problem with some 90s TV shows where there's an in-law joke, and like it's a kid's show. Like, kids aren't related to that. that. That happened to Saved by the Bell episode I watched well, a while I mean, ago. It, even though it's a Canadian uh, show, it was broadcasted in the United States. So, I mean, we get the joke because, you know, we divorce each other all the time. <laughs> well, he sees... That's right, Bob Ross. That's you can hear, right. You can hear his brush jokes on that. He sees Ricky. <laughs> he sees Ricky's ghost in school. Freaks out. Backs out of his chair. And all the kids start gathered around him. He says, "Ricky." Gets sent to the nurse's office. Who asks, "Who is Ricky?" As he admits, it was a friend of his who tragically died. He says he sometimes has these dreams, but again, sometimes, and like everybody's talking and his family, like this happens almost every night. <sighs> That's when he says that the body was never found, but he keeps seeing him. Oh, when I looked up the dad, he was on uh, Assassin's Creed and Arthur as well. No one has seen anything happening. On you said Ar- Arthur. Yeah. The, the, are we talking about the Aardvark? Or are we talking Aardvark. about okay? Or are we talking about the fucking Knights of the Round Table, Arthur? All no, right. I'm talking about Aardvark because uh, we've seen multiple actors from All Your Afraid the Dark be on that show, and when we had John Young on, he said. Those were produced in Canada, but I'm thinking like this is a lot of people we're seeing. I mean, it's been a few dozen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many voice actors are on Assassin's Creed? Like 500 or something. Well, like I that, mean, or? how many people do you assassinate on Assassin's Creed? You played the first one, and I watched you play it right right about the time that I was going to boot camp. And then by the time I had gotten back from Africa, there were fucking five of them out, and I was like, you know what? I'm never going to play this series because. I've missed out on all of them. Yeah, we're going to play that for uh, in between season three and four, I think, right? Are we? Hey, we'll, we'll watch the movie. Help me do a movie review of it. Oh, God. That's the... Oh, fuck. Who played... Who played in that? I'm going to this up real quick. Um, <clears throat> while you're doing that... Yeah, the, I think it's the same dude that played in the um, in the Prince of Persia one. It's long, maybe. Two, almost two and a half hours. Jake Gyllenhaal is he is he in the Assassin's Creed one? Because that's who. No, it's Mike uh, Fast 
Bender. Marion Catler, Jeremy Irons, Brendan Gleason. I don't know any Michael of those Lowe. people. No. Right. So. Anywho. Looks out of the nurse's office, sees the ghost again who fades away. The bike fades. Then he sees this ghost in the office and his hearing becomes somewhat affected. This is pretty creepy, Ben. I mean, yeah, but, you know, he's still, I'm pretty sure he would be committed from from the nurse's office and not like, okay, your dad's going to come get you now. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, like the, if you're having a freak out in the nurse's office, your dad's not going to be the one taking you home like, oh, yeah. They put you on bed rest. Yeah, bed rest with some fucking grocery sandwiches and tomato soup uh, and some ginger ale because that was the classic thing to give the kids. Carbon of soda when you're sick, that's right? A, that's a cure-all right there. Yeah. I miss the days back like in the uh, 19th century where they gave kids like whiskey and shit. I don't want anything. I really don't want anything. <laughs> They're drunk. Okay. They're drunk. You can't... We can kick them out of the studio or no. and banish them. Or ro- the riding that wave. Why? I just want to live up to your expectations. See? You want us talking. You want us talking. You want me drunk. Uh, apparently my girlfriend's really drunk right now. Oh, hot damn. Mm. Not really drunk. Drunk like, enough. Moderately. Tipsy. tipsy. All right. <laughs> We're transported to the scene where the dead is driving Mike home. And I love this like 90 station wagon we have here. But oh, yeah. I don't know, but... And I have a station wagon technically, but no one calls it that. It's right. Dodge Magnum. But we don't always see station wagons anymore. I just remember like back in the 80s, like everybody would have a station wagon. You just put all the kids in the back seat and shit. Yeah. I mean, Pete and Pete had a station wagon oh, too. Oh, yeah. And we were talk. Was it me and you were talking about the uh, road episode? Oh, dude. The that's King of the road? probably yeah. Yeah, like that's the most memorable one for me is the, the King of the Road one where they switched license plate at because his said King Fraud on it. Uh huh. Yeah, well, I like how they're, they're, he says, take the wheel, and he's up there fucking climbing. <laughs> 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 just stack shit on top. <laughs> Although, I know a show that had a famous station wagon, Mary Children. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a bunch of 90s shit that had that. Oh, uh, the 80s movie, and Kayla and, I, Kayla and I were talking about this uh, in New York, because when we're walking through Times Square, we saw that John Lithgow has his own show now. And... The movie she mentioned, and it was the first one I saw by him, was Harry and the Hendersons. What? Oh, dude, I yeah, love Henry, Harry and the Hendersons. You know what's funny? For Halloween, I saw a full costume for that that in- included uh, like two foot stilts. Um, and I just did not have the money at the time to buy it, but I was going to be Harry from Harry and the Henderson. And then by the time I did have the money, uh, it had been sold, and I was fucking heartbroken. But, um, <laughs> you know, there, there's still time. I'm sure. Uh, do any of these millennials know what Harry and Harrison says? No. Yes, with John Lithgow. 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 Oh, uh, w- would she be classified as a millennial? Technically, my uncle said. I'm a millennial. I'm yeah. Generation I X. Told him, don't want me in with them. Generation <laughs> X is forty, forty-five by I'm by now. Y. Generation Y. Yeah. And then there's a generation, boomerang generation, which were the things we have because our generation has a really fucking hard time buying houses nowadays. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a hard time. Yeah, you were military. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, tr- try the sixty thousand dollar down payment that KO nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm starting college Monday, and uh, let me tell you, if I have to do any speech classes, you're gonna have to. I'm gonna fucking offend a lot of people. Because here I am, 29. Like, that's not bad. That's not bad for doing college. But I'm going to be in there with people that just left high school. Yeah. And I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to offend a lot of fucking people. Well, Ben, I have a, I have an undergrad. I have an MBA. And, like, I've been in class with a lot of people. And that's nothing. I mean, I was in, in class with people in their 60s before. I mean, yeah, yeah college is open to anybody who wants to go. And a lot of these older people either go back for a new job or they just get bored and want to have something to do. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right now, like if anyone tries to get political, I'm a shit all over them. I just remember the number one thing about speech class: know your audience. That, that is the number one rule. I'm I, a DJ, so I didn't know that. I thought it was. Let's make some nice little clouds that just float around and, and have fun all day. 
they won't know who Bob Ross is. <laughs> yeah, again, on Kaylin, our podcast, KNA TV Day, we had a joy painting with Bob Ross episode. And Kayla fe- lo- fell in love with Bob Ross. Well, I'll tell you, me and me and Ashley, uh, we were having problems going to sleep one night, and we put it on to like calm us down and all that stuff. But we ended up staying up just to fucking watch the painting get finished. So like it didn't it didn't work out the way that <laughs> we we expected it to. But I'll tell you what does put me out is fucking like documentaries on like Egypt and shit. Yeah, I used to watch those all the time of night, but I, I was big into evolution and uh, religious documentaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, when he's driving down the road with this station wagon, Mike sees somebody riding a red bicycle with a gray hoodie on. Gotta be him. Yeah, it's gotta, gotta be Ricky. Yeah, of course. He persuades his dad to follow him down a road where he gets out of the car and just approaches him and then finds some girl. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, almost set off an amber alert <laughs> yeah and she doesn't show any emotion to him the, the dad talks him into coming back a fishing ship is mentioned with the younger brother ben and apparently they're going to the same type of what it's is the this same, like, it's, it's a, the same place yeah, as but, uh but is this a real river where the reservoir goes out to or is this a man-made river what what is this thing i'm it, not i it, mean fish, it's never said yeah but Fish are going to be there? Uh, sure. Why not? Okay. Sounds good. Well, apparently because of all these hallucinations that Mike has been having, he's bedridden for the whole weekend. It says he has nothing to do. And but, that's when you mentioned something too. Yeah, he's got. he's not got nothing better to do than just beat off until nothing else comes out. Now, I know there's an age <laughs> thing here. Um, fortunately, I hit puberty... Actually, wait. Yeah, this would have been. I didn't have the internet when I first hit puberty. Started masturbating. Well, I mean, so what? what you you hit it though when the internet was out, right? <laughs> hey, be quiet down by there. These are the type of conversations <laughs> we have on, <laughs> between on brother and these are brother and brother conversations talking about you know just beating off in a this comfortable baby, environment. We know what you do. Well, hey. your, well your imagination is better at that time. So I, I guess he, he he's either going to steal his dad's Playboys. Now or, I will say, I mean, I've 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 checked out some of our Instagram comments that. I mean, they obviously weren't by me talking about beating off to Britney Spears and all that. So, I oh, mean, it's Paris Hilton. Oh, yeah, and Britney Spears because oh. we, yeah, on our Instagram, <laughs> we follow off by 90s things and we, we comment what comes to mind. Well, I mean, okay, Instagram.com slash we're not afraid of the dark, no apostrophe. Well, while Mikey's jerking off, yes. Actually, before that, yeah, till, yeah, till yeah. nothing else comes out, well, he, you just have that miniature seizure and that you just dried up. We uh, get to the point where he asked about the dad's joke, and the little brother says, "Ask me why, why I'm a comedian," and I didn't understand this fucking. Me joke either. I, I didn't understand what he said. It reminded me of uh, fucking the never ending story where you can't understand him at the end, and maybe <laughs> him giving that princess a name. That's exactly what it reminded me of. I don't know what he said. I was trying to find the script online, but it doesn't exist. Because so, they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I could tag the writer or something again and get some... Tag maybe, the kid. If if they can send me a original script, that'd be a great <laughs> present. Again, whatever for the Why am I hearing all this noise in the background? Because, uh, I mean, girls will be girls and they're drunk. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to find the script? Are you looking up masturbation stats? Yes. What? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, they're on our Instagram. Holy shit! We see the scene at night where there's a bright light coming through the door, and he's approached by Ricky once again. Wakes back up, and he's in bed. The dad finds Ben going towards Mike's room, but for some reason, goes back outside and starts throwing shit at the window to wake him up. I, I don't understand that part. By the way, um, I guess he was trying to talk to him. And like his, I don't know, his dad was like, oh, once he's resting, don't fuck with him. <laughs> or you get the belt. Well, Mike hears Ricky calling his name, looks out and sees nothing. Then he appears out there. And at that point, I was thinking, man, this shit's getting old. I mean, they, they need to have this ghost character talk to him sooner. Right. Um, I was half expecting like the way it was shot for him to be like, end up in the room but it wouldn't be a shiny new bicycle because bicycles are only around 
inside uh, outside they're not allowed inside yes yeah, that's true we're then seeing with Ben walking with two pretty rude friends. I mean, how did he get hooked up with these kids for the uh, fishing trip? Yeah, these fuckers, <laughs> man, <laughs> oh asshole. man! Let me tell you, I had you, I had you cracking up with this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna get that part. <coughs> Don't die. I'll try not. When Mike goes down, he calls out Ricky and then sees him, and then behind him, he says, "I'm here." He grabs Ricky. He notices he's cold. And the ghost of Ricky has aged as well. Right. Well, I mean, what that was something that I noticed, too. Like That was a new one. Cause, I did. Because the uh, Frozen ghost episode, the, the all kids didn't age. Yeah. And the Lonely ghost episode. Right. So, yeah, I, I did like that factor. And I understand the concept behind it when we get towards the end of the episode now, here. Now, I do, I do like the fact that we, in this one, we have an older character. Like, it's not, it's not like, oh, they're 10, they're 11. This guy's like seventeen. Yeah, I, I yeah, I do like the episodes more when when it's like fifteen to seventeen year olds. I, I think it just has a it has a more timeless plot usually. And I do like it. I don't know. Like it seems like you know these kids. Like you know, I don't know what age like the Midnight Society was when they did their shit, or what age these kids were when they were acting. Or anything like that, but like you know, you have that older demographic, and they put more effort into their acting, which you know, this one aged really well for me. Oh yeah, because of that, you know. I think an episode like this could have come out nowadays, minus the no cell phone usage. I mean, that's the one thing that's dating in some, in some fashion. But other than that, I mean, the story is still fresh. Right, 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 right. While fishing, Ben knocks over one of his friend's drinks. I tell you, I had a time with this. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like a hummingbird's beak full of soda that comes out of this yeah. fucking can. He, when he knocks it over, the way it falls, it lands. It lands on its top for all of like two seconds, and then it flips to where it's sitting like it would normally sit. So it might have spilled out just a little bit, and that friend made it seem like it was the biggest fucking deal in the oh, yeah. world that he kicked over his coke. Yeah, he just takes his, or I think it's a soda or, so, or a fishing tackle or something like that. He just ups their fucking throws. Yeah, <laughs> he, like, he, he, throws, you, he throws some shit because, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, oh, that was an accident too. Motherfucker, dude, you lost a sip of coke out of that can. And, you know, I remember when we were kids, like, I don't know if it's still true today, but back in the 90s, if you got pissed at with your friends, you usually threw some of others. Like, I remember, like, if you got pissed, you either, like, throw some shit on, like, a telephone line or something like that, or up in a tree. the pain to fucking get it. I don't know, man. Like, for for us, we, we had a pretty good time of fucking our own shit up, because I remember back when we used to go down to uh, Apes Hole, you know, down to the beach and all that shit. And uh, we went to motherfucking Kite Loft. Hey, Kite Loft, you want to sponsor us? You can. Ben, I'm friends with the general manager on Facebook. Oh, well, yeah. guess what? <laughs> so just Send us some business. goddamn kites, son. <laughs> anyway, um, I remember when you got yours caught in a fucking power line down there. And it stayed there until it eventually degraded into nothing. Yeah, that, t- that took about two or three years, right? Yes. Mike asked Ricky if he's there to hurt him. So it's not going to hurt him. Well, no. He what he says is <clears throat> he's like, I tried to save you, and you know whatever. Oh yeah, he's supposed to it, apologize. What, what, yeah. Well, so whatever you're going to do, you know, just you know, do it knowing that. And he's like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to warn you. Yeah, and then we realized that his younger brother is in grave danger because his fucking asshole of a Fred decided up to throw his shit across into the water reservoir place when he gets his foot stuck on some rock. Yeah, okay. So, is <laughs> did you have, like, when you were watching that with me, did you think of an alternate situation for him to get out of there uh push the rock up well he's trying to lift the rock okay 
What else? Hmm. Take your, shit off, uh, take your shoe off. Take your fucking boot off. Yeah. yeah. Take the glasses off. He never does it. That's the one gripe I have with this. He never is like, you know what? Fuck this galoshes boot. I'm going to live. No. Uh He wants to go with all his pieces on. I like how Ricky then gives Mike the red bike. Yeah. And uh, he does say he misses him. Right. That happens. There's a shot of Ben yelling for help. And his friends are like, oh, here's something. Oh, no, I got to go back uh, catching my minnow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They hear him and like, yo, fuck that guy. He kicked over my Coke. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, it could have been like a Capri Sun or some shit where it's like, it's like a little uh, nipple drop comes out of the fucking straw or Man, something. Like- let me tell you, for the longest time, I used to stab through the back of those fucking things. Like, I couldn't just go through one side. I'd go through them fucking both. Kayla, what was that drink we had in Manhattan that tastes like Capri Sun? Mondo's. It was that rose water drink <laughs> oh, yeah. at Eden Local. Yeah, we had a drink in Manhattan where they, they sprayed water, uh, rest petal water over this fucking shit. What afterwards. the fuck? This is Manhattan for you, man. We it had this with the best mixologist. Smelled amazing. Oh man, it was it was good. <sighs> you know they discontinued the uh, the Kool Aid fucking jammers. I don't remember those. Those are the Capri Sun pouches of the Kool Aid, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, what, yeah. what about High C? The the packages. The juice boxes. Oh yeah. yeah. They still make those, right? Yeah, as far as I know. Does anybody still make Kool Aid? Like they with the with the sugar pack? Is that like twenty five cents in the store? God, no. Let me it's tell you. Like sugar water red. Um, <laughs> Crystal Light is the new jam. I know a couple of people that still do it, and let me tell you, you'll have instant diabetes if you drink it. You know, I think it's the perfect time for us to view a, a nineties commercial with the show. So I'll put this in the show notes as well. What's it going to be? A fucking juicy fruit commercial? Sunny D, man. Sunny. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, it's not D. Right. We got purple stuff. Right. We got milk. All right, from '94. Oh, I got frisbee action happening. That's here. right. Yeah, I, I remember this one. Double Sunny D. <laughs> she ain't oh, fucking they, around. Oh, they come with the lab. They throw the frisbee at the mob. They're walking here. There's cola. The, uh, fuck this shit. Oh, oh, oh man, I got the Sunny D here. Oh, fuck that shit. <laughs> I remember this episode vividly. This is definitely on Nickelodeon or Disney or something like that. Sunny delight. Stuff kids go oh, yeah, my. mom has to love it because she's the one buying the shit. Right. They better love it. I like how mom has that like 90s vest. Or else they're there. gonna get the fucking belt. <laughs> ah, shit. Not as good. All right. Again, anybody listening from Sunny D will we'll talk to you. Hey, <laughs> let, let's mix Sunny D <laughs> with Twisted T. We're, we're gonna call it Sunny T. We're gonna call it no, it's an Arnold uh Arnold how about Swartz- Twisted D. Oh <laughs> um no, we'll call it re- all right. So you know how lemonade, you know how lemonade in tea is an Arnold Palmer. If it's alcoholic, let's call it an Arnold Schwarzenegger. I need this sound effect for, for Kayla. Call it John Daly. What? <laughs> Carson Daly. John Daly. He was a drunk offer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got the peanut gallery back there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What? Huh? Okay. There's one plot hole here. Ricky bikes past one of the maintenance guys. You know, at first I thought that was the dad. It's not a dad. He's in a fucking golf. The dad's off a business. He gave us two. No, 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 no. The dad was supposed to go fucking fishing with him. Oh, yeah, that's right? right. Yeah, but he's in like a, just this golf cart thing. He just bikes past him. Yeah, I know. That's why I thought it was the dad. Like, oh, he's doing this shit undercover, like saving his brother from, you know, from shit. And his dad doesn't know that he's not in bed. You know, like, that's what I thought until, mm-hmm. like, dude started fucking opening the dam up. Yeah, I mean, he could have stopped until that, that made this guy. The, my brother's in danger. Don't open this hatch. Because, I mean, this guy just goes over there and opens it up. Gets yeah. Stuff that. Why is it readily available for anyone that's walking on that fucking path is another question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It's just there like it's a fu- fucking some kind of medieval. It's this medieval <laughs> crank system. Like, dude, there's not a fence around it. There's no lock on it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just right fucking there on this bridge. Like, oh, yeah, just anyone that wants to open the dam up can. I thought I had a toilet up in that with. No, dude, he was doing sure? it by hand. Yes. Oh, we're going back to this real quick. I want to check this well, out. then I'm going to talk about uh, different types of bikes while you do that. Um, Huffy. 
was no, a good they, one. They, that was a classic. No, uh, it we, was. Uh, hold on, uh, let's, let's uh, mon, mongoose uh-huh. made a big uh, made a big appearance. Let's watch the '90s commercial um, hockey real quick. Stephen King's It had a bike named Silver. What's this shit? Schwinn. Someone's got a tackle box. They leave a special net in there. Schwinn. Oh, what the Schwinn fuck? was a good one. What Huffy is this? I don't remember seeing this. They had it all established, like a tackle box here. She can do her makeup. Well, it must be some <laughs> fucking Fisher Price or like. <laughs> what? Oh, it's got, oh, I just saw a troll doll. He bought me one for Christmas, like last year. Oh, that's so creepy. Oh, Jesus. It's it like must be a stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's Huffy's. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. This is 90s shit. All right. Um, I just remember BMX was still popular in Oreo at the, at the time with in the nineties. Mon- yeah, mongoose. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, uh, we well, that- well we got uh, we got Christopher a bike for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came with pegs, but I don't have a ratchet like long enough to put the pegs on it. So he just got has a bike. <laughs> Use the real term of ratchet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> you are young. <laughs> All right, Ben. So we're right here where he takes the bike from Ricky, says and misses him, stuff like that. It's uh, we got one shot of the friends, I think, for this. Oh, here it is. He's, he's biking down. Uh-huh. Ben's still stuck with his. Yeah, did not take his beard off. His friends are like, "Fuck you." He's wearing his dad's puffy jacket. <laughs> <laughs> jacket, like, <laughs> biggest shit. I do like the cinematography there. Dude, what the fuck? There was a movie where a dude's riding a kid's bike. I cannot fucking remember. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. All right, right no, now, not yeah, right, well, well, right here, he's by, he's by the maintenance guy. Uh-huh. He comes on the bridge, okay? Yeah. He's like, where's my brother? All right, it's just bike down He again. knows where it is because Ricky told him it's oh, wait, where, it's where there. I die. Right, he comes down this little path. All right, maintenance guy comes out. Yes, he has a tool. See yeah, that? okay. But it's... Yeah, it's just it's out a, of nowhere. It's like a little crank. It's yeah. a, it, no, the crank was already there. He just like has the handle right, for so it. You, so you could probably buy that like Ace or like True Value. Or, or you can just move it without the handle on it. <laughs> but you, you literally step over a foot of like barrier and mm-hmm. then you're right there by the crank system. He finds Ben before the shit comes down. He's able to lift up the rock and get him out of there. Now... This scene right here, I thought they could have hired a better stunt coordinator. What do you think? I I think I think the scene itself was they they got out of there before it, it got too fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So they really didn't need a stunt coordinator. All right, I thought it was a little more dramatic in that part. It, was, it wasn't terrible, but I just I've, I've seen some better work. Well, what, this wait, what was is the that fucking nineties. Uh-uh. They're what's that come from? They're researching. Over there, turn that vibe now. Hey, Kayla, Kayla, how drunk is she? Pretty drunk. Kayla, yo, lady I, I is drunk. I'm an engineer. I can hear All right, I'm good now. All right, let's resume, Ben. He starts screaming out for pain. Yeah, these these friends are still like, uh, let me catch my uh, trout or whatever. Yeah, a fucking bass or whatever <laughs> they catch in Canada. And here's the thing: they see the or Ricky sees the old rusty bike. I did like that touch. Yeah, me too. I did like that touch. Because I think they said before they never found the bike, right? They never found either of them. Oh, it's creepy. Um, so, <clears throat> I, that, I mean, they, they, they should have maybe focused on the bike a little more because of the, the name of the story and all that other stuff. But at the same point, you know, I guess this was their way of like making it back. Like, okay, he gave you his ghost bike, and then you save your you save your brother, and now the ghost bike is the bike of how it was. Now all busted up, wheel all bent up. You know. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I thought that was creepy. Uh, by the way, this was written by the same woman her named Cassandra. Who does, this is the first uh, episode in the series, but she did the Magician's Assistant episode. Oh, fuck. Yeah, what a contrast. Wait a I mean. step the <laughs> fuck up, girl. <laughs> and this is directed by Dave Winning, who did the Dream Machine episode, the Tale of the Locker uh, 22 episode. Well, Dream Machine was 
It wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't I like bad. It. Yeah. That was the typewriter shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, wasn't bad. The mm-hmm. locker wasn't bad. Um, oh, and I'll give this episode this. I thought the acting was great. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It was the, one of the very few episodes where I didn't have a problem with any of the characters at all. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Because let me tell you, <laughs> we've been doing two fucking seasons of this shit. And um, <laughs> I tell you, I I love Are You Afraid of the Dark? You love Are You Afraid of the Dark? They love Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like, but let me tell you, some of the episodes that you're like, oh, dude, I remember this. They don't age well. They don't age well at all. Yeah, some don't. So this one does. Yeah, this one does age well. And, you know, as soon as you watch it, you fucking, you know exactly what's happening. You know the the brother's going to be in trouble. Like, you can see it coming, but the way that it's it's delivered is is great. Yeah, David says in the voice saver at the end here that the very next day, a guy fishing found Ricky's remains. Why did it take so long? Because he was never really gone. At least not until we did a favor for a friend. So did Ricky know like for five years that Mike's little brother was going to be in some trouble there? Well, I mean, if that's the case, then he would have tried to warn him or earlier. And he did try to say, oh, well, I tried warning you at school, but you were a little baby bag bitch about it and had to go to the fucking nurse. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but pretty, I mean, pretty much I'm, I'm sure it's like, oh, well, you know, okay. So rather than me telling you, you know, fucking three years in advance, hey, Ben's going to be in trouble on his fucking fishing trip in 2000, or oh, no, 1994 or whatever the fuck. He's like, hey, I'm giving you two days notice. Ben's fucked. He's going to kick over a Coke can and then all hell is going to break <laughs> loose. Yeah, that's true. Hey, did you any, you two ladies over there remember this episode? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, because this is one of the like, most popular episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark. I'm sorry. We've been preoccupied. Which episode are you doing? The what? Tale of the Shiny Red Bicycle. No. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Kayla, how many of these have you seen? I think I've seen too. most of the like the, reboot series. There was no reboot season. From there was, Ben. I guess two seasons, seasons Six or seven. The late 90s. Holy fuck. We're, we're going to have Kayla do an episode of our sister. Because I remember Camille uh, watched a few episodes, but well, me and Ben didn't. That'll be like a year out. Yeah, we're a while away from that. I mean, we're... we're. By the way, this is the last episode we're recording of season two. We record the episodes out of order just based on some production things. It's okay. But, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, all right. <laughs> yes, we're but you know, we got season three coming up. It's good shit. Well, thanks again, everybody, for listening. Again, reach us at we're not afraid of the dark at gmail.com or on Instagram or on Facebook. We want to hear what you think of the yeah, show. Yeah, please comment on fucking yeah. Instagram. Let us know what you think of shit because, oh my God. I mean, we see we see some likes as of what? Today's the 14th of yeah. January. Mm-hmm. We're recording this 13th, 14th of January. And I mean, we see some likes, but we want. We want some fucking feedback from you guys. Uh, we want to know, like, you know, what you think of, you know, the show, all that stuff. I mean, you want if if we get some hate, we get some hate. I really like. Trust me, I don't. I don't care. But, yeah, I deal with those haters every uh, day. Yeah, I, but I do want to know what you guys think of this shit because, I mean, that we can all live relive it together. You know, your opinion's your opinion, ours is ours. It, I mean, that's the way it is. Especially the way this millennial shit is going. Everybody so fucking says, Ooh, what's Bob Ross have to say? Let's get crazy. There are no mistakes. Russia. Um, this is your brain test. Um, a bravery <laughs> test. Yeah, it is a bravery <laughs> test, Bob Ross. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for listening, guys. Feel the mess, feel the mess. Hulaney, when we leave you in your casket, that's tragic. Beat me and my genie flying past it. I'm Aladdin getting blasted, blasting this rap shit. Plaster black and now talking smack with savage crackers. I'd rather be a jackass than average, I guess. I'm just a savage at that practice, like a master, no less the best.